Jersey's own Zach Gell. Or maybe it's Pennsylvania. Anyhow, it's one of the two, I'm pretty sure. The Zach Gell Show continues on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey rolling along on this Thursday. We all know the name LeVar Ball, the father of Lonzo, Leangelo, and LaMelo Ball. And he's kind enough to hop on board with us right now out west on the West Coast. LeVar, we appreciate a few minutes, and how are you? Good morning, good morning. How you doing? I'm well, good. I'm doing great, and I appreciate you coming on. Before we get into the serious stuff, I do have to ask you, I was reading an article uh, a few days ago and it was talking about how you make the best scrambled eggs. Why are your eggs the best? Man, I told you I'm a better cook than Sarah Lee. <laughs> well, you say, than her. well, you say a lot of crazy stuff. I could guarantee you. My grandmother, if you guys had an egg cook-off, she'd kick your ass. No, no. <laughs> Man, I make the best eggs around. Uh, I'd like to disagree with you. But, hey, let's get into the serious stuff uh, right now. The Sixers have a chance to get the number one pick in the draft or be in the top three because they have – uh, the potential with their pick, and then also uh, the pick swap with Sacramento. Uh, let's say you run into Brian Colangelo. The Sixers get the number one pick. What would your pitch be for your son to go number one overall? To go number one overall, it, w- it would be f- fantastic. But, you know, like I said, I prefer him to play for the Lakers, whether he's number two or three pick, the you know, the Lakers get him. But, like I said, his main goal was just to go to the NBA. So whatever team he lands on, he's going to make the best of it. He's not going to be like, oh, man, I wish I could have went here. I don't want to play for these guys. It doesn't matter. But but let's just say if a a GM asks you, and I know that you want your son to go to the Lakers, but like you said, you'd be happy to go to any team. If a GM asks me, I'm going to say, man, you got the best pick in the draft ever. On the fact that my son makes everybody around him better. So your chances of winning the championship – are very good. Now, there's another concern, and you've uh, disregarded this in the past by saying uh, the topic of will you let your son be his own man in the pros, and you say you won't interfere. Why should people believe you with that? Well, Zoe is his own man now. Like I said, the only thing I do with Zoe is I, I guide him. He hasn't lived enough to make as many decisions as he thinks he can as I, as. As you get older, you need that help. I'm not going. People saying live his own life. Live his own life is in doing what? No, it's you very fair. What I'm saying he's already his own man. He's been his own man since he's been 18 years old. He's been living on his own since he's been in college. I just give him guidance where I don't let people take advantage of him. That's what people don't understand. And that's the role of a father. You got to be protective exactly. of your son. And trust me, I have a great relationship with my dad. He's my biggest critic. He's also my biggest supporter. And that's the type of relationship that a father and son should have. So exactly. no one can take this away from you, that you have produced three sons that are tremendous basketball players and all appear to be great human beings. I'm curious about your philosophy on raising a child and how you train your sons to be in the spot where they are right now. Well, I train my sons, like I, I told them like this, the key to life is if you have a passion for something and you happen to get paid for it, regardless of what the price is, you've won. Because you're getting to do something that you love. It's just like I told my boys, when you're this good, a lot comes with that. And you have to understand that aspect, too. Because, like I said, it's basketball. It's, it's just entertainment. And that's how my boys treat it. They don't treat it like a life or death situation where you put all this pressure on them and say, oh, i got to win, i got to make this basket. They're doing something that they love to do. But and that's, I- that's how I've always trained my boys. Like, with, with anything, if you have a kid and he has a passion for something, just get behind him. And just go with him, you know. As long as he has a passion for it, you're not forcing him to do nothing. You're not putting any pressure on him. And that's how I had my boys. So this is fun to them. I think the pressure part is very fascinating because we see the Final Four and you saw kids on UNC and Oregon miss free throws at the end and not box out. Things that I believe they would really do in a regular season game. How do you get your sons not to be phased by the pressure of an NCAA game or even eventually a professional game? Because, it's, like I told them, they understand – what pressure is. And I've told them pressure since they've been little. They understand pressure is like uh, you coming home and people saying, oh, you can't stay here no more. And then you ask them, where do I go? And they're like, I don't know, but you can't come here. Or you you hungry and don't have no money for food. That, that's pressure. Making a miss in a shot is, is not pressure. So that's why it's never been like that to them. And like I've always explained to them, it's entertainment. It's either a good movie or a bad movie, but you go watch the next movie. So that's why they don't go too high or too low on the wins and losses. 
LeVar Ball with us right now on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the jersey. Going back to the point that I said that a father should be the biggest critic and also biggest supporter of their son. And we all know that, hey, in a NCAA season, your son had a tremendous year at UCLA. But when you look back at that Kentucky game, 10 points, one of six from three, what did you say to your son after a loss like that? After a loss like that, I said, son, you got to be a little more aggressive going to the basket. And sometimes you can't wait for everybody to get on. You've got to kind of push the envelope. And I've told him before the season started, I said, you're going to need one of those games where you have 30-something points to get your team over that hump. And I told him after the game, that was that game. And then that was it. And but I, like I said, from every game, you can learn something. And I don't believe in that part. Well, you learn more from losing than you do winning. No, you learn from more from winning, to me. And now your son's getting ready for the NBA draft. We all know he's going pro. He announced that. Uh, how, what is your son doing right now to get ready for the NBA draft coming up uh, in June? Uh, just conditioning, getting stronger, getting bigger, getting faster. That's all it is. The game is the same. But on that next level, guys are a lot stronger and faster in those positions. So that's what you work on, the speed, the conditioning, and also getting stronger, the strength. That's the main thing. LeVar Ball with us. LeVar, you've been very public and you never back down from any interview and you give your transparent opinions and I appreciate that as a talk show host, but some people say you should tone it down a a bit. I know you say that your sons would never come up to you and say, hey dad, tone it down, but in this diligent process of the NBA draft, let's say if Lonzo comes up to you and says, hey dad, can you just take it a scale back uh, just for a few more months? I don't even believe that. I'm not even hypothetically thinking like that because see, this is how I am. I'm not going to change. Scale it down. What do they mean by scale it down? Here's the thing. When a guy with this much talent, they're just looking for the mom to be in the place. And now it's an outspoken father. They don't like that. That's just me. A lot of people, when you have these superstars, d Wade, LeBron James, where they dads at? See, it's easier to work with the mom because, hey, you're taking care of my baby. Yeah, you ain't giving them nothing, but you're acting like you're taking care of them. And so now I'm up there, and I'm like, nah, nah, this is how we roll. Now they're like, hey, you need to get back a little bit. Get back for what? Because Lonzo has to perform on that court. That's his job. he got to perform on the court. So it doesn't matter what I'm saying on the outside. Have if you, it does, guess what? He ain't built for this. Have you always been like this? Always. It's never going to change. I'll be that old guy, 92 <laughs> years old, talking about, I told you I was the baddest. They put two people better than me, and I'm both of them. So, so even if you had a cane at 92, you're still going to be hooting and hollering for your yes, sons. Yes, that's what I do. That's just me. LeVar Ball with us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. Let's get into the stuff with the high school coach. Outline uh, to me your problems with the high school coach right now at Chino Hills. Well, yeah, they're they, they trying to take it. Like I said, they had a little interview with him, and he tried to act crazy. You know, I'm the one who got him up in there. I thought he was with us, and then, you know, just helping him, bringing the team, getting the players and all that. And then all of a sudden, he, he gets this big head and thinks he's all that. And now everybody looking at me, not knowing the stuff he's doing in the background is wrong. Like cussing out my kids when they're losing. Not letting them practice for a couple of weeks before the championship game because he feels they disrespectful. But- and now one teacher in the school said my boys is disrespectful. He knew what he was getting into when we was doing this. We've been trapping and running and playing fast the whole time when we went 35-0 and 0 the year before that. So we're doing the same thing. And then he tells my boys stuff like this. Don't let your dad get in your head. Listen to me. Just do what I tell you. Been training them and feeding them and taking care of them all their life. We've been playing the same way. Well, let me just get a few clarity on some of the stuff that was in the article. Number one, did you ever go into the locker room and they asked you not to? Oh, yes, yes. After a game, we had won. Okay, and I was in front of everybody, and there was nowhere else to go. And I was going in the locker room, and as I'm getting ready to go in there, he's screaming from behind, don't go in there, LeVar, don't go in there. So when somebody tell me don't go in there, but the five previous games that I went into the locker room and said great job after he finished doing his talking and telling him all oh, the guys working, he said nothing. Now all of a sudden you got an attitude, now you're mad. But it wasn't like I was coming in the locker room every single time going, yo, this is what we're going to do. We gonna... No, it wasn't none of that. On the fact that he tried to tell me as a grown man not to go somewhere, that's what I walked in there. But I was the first one in the locker room because I was in front. I was going in there anyway. Now, all of a sudden, he don't go in there like I'm a kid. Wait a minute. This is high school basketball. But here's the thing. When I played high school sports, I don't ever remember a parent being in the locker room. Why not just wait till they come out? Why not wait till they come out? Because I've always went in there sometimes to congratulate the guys. This is his first rodeo. 
You, he's never had a coaching job, even on a freshman team. Never had a head coaching job doing anything. And how you get the number one team in the nation and coaching the ball boys? Let me ask you one more thing when it comes to this article. Did you have the private meeting with the team on the 18th floor? I read that in the article. See, that's what they said. I was sitting in the thing talking to my boys. And you know how the kids go downstairs? How would I have a private meeting? I don't even know what rooms the boys are in. And you know how they have the little uh, couches and stuff where you sit in a little room? Not in the room, but uh, by the elevator. Sure. Yeah. These guys were coming up from downstairs and just stopped and start listening to me. So there's a lot of stuff that it seems like LeVar Ball gets misportrayed about. If you had to describe me. Misportrayed on all that because everybody on the team, I train. All right, but, but if you had to describe me who LeVar Ball is, how do you explain who you are? How do I explain who I am? Yes. The world's greatest person in the world. <laughs> I like That's that. That's how I explain myself. Uh, I like that. LeVar Ball with us right now. Hey, LeVar, uh, some other people, when they see this stuff w- with your sons and you saying that you don't want your son to play for the high school coach next year, some could say, hey, shouldn't you just teach your son a life lesson that sometimes the coach isn't always the best and you just got to fight through it? Why not teach him that life lesson? Why do we have to fight through it and we already had success? I'm not going to have – th- this guy comes in one year? And like I said, my son's not going to play for him because it's a bad atmosphere for the team. If your guy is the point guard, you should have a relationship if you're the head coach with your point guard. But if you disrespected him and cussing him out and t- toughing it out, we the ones who made Geno Hills. Nobody be coming there if the ball boys wasn't there. Nobody's coming to the school saying, you know what, I hope I get to play for Steph Gilling. People are coming to school saying we want to play with the ball boys. We like the style of play. They play hard. It's exciting. It's fun. Let's leave it at that. Instead of making it about yourself, saying I'm the coach of this and that. What's your conversation like with parents when you're watching these games or leading up to the game? What do the parents my say to you? My conversation with parents is they come up to me and they say, LeVar, you've done the greatest thing for my son. Because I give these young kids confidence and let them do what they do. And it's not all about the brashing and all about You know, it's like, you know, can we help these kids get a scholarship? All of them ain't going to get a scholarship, but can we make it a fun atmosphere where they say, man, my son has confidence, he loves hanging out with your guys, and it's just fun. That's what it's about. But some of these guys act like they're determining and uh, controlling people's futures just because you have a little authority. Would you want to coach the high school team if you were given the opportunity? If I I can coach the high school team if I was given an opportunity, but I don't want to coach. I don't want to coach. I ain't got time for that. I'm doing some other things. Like I said, I prepare these guys so when they go over there and play, they on autopilot. LeVar Ball with us, wrapping up with him, the father of Lonzo Leangelo and the Mellow Ball. Hey, just getting back to the Sixers, just being a fan of the game like you are, what do you think about the direction of the Sixers and where they're moving? Well, they're getting some nice pieces. The only the bad thing is everybody keeps getting hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it's very unfortunate. And, and, and see, see, the bad thing about the Sixers is just when – before everybody can jail, they, they either get hurt or just when they're about to get good, they out of there. How many games, let's say if they're healthy, and you have Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Lonzo Ball on the court, how many games wow. does that team win? What? How many games do they win? They win championship right there first year? Man, they go to the playoffs the first year, for sure. And they want to see how far they get in the playoffs. They can surprise a lot of people and get the championship. Hey. Every time I think my son's on the team, I think his team can win the championship. Whether they come up short or they make it, I think like that every single time. That's why when the guys ask me, how many championships do I think Lonzo will win? I said more than six. Well, since you bring up six, you know the standard of six was set by Michael Jordan. Exactly. Do you, do you, you really want to believe? Be the best player in the world, you got to beat him. So do, you got to get seven. Do you really believe you could beat him in a game of one on one? I don't believe. I know I can beat him in a game of one on one. But then when people watch your men's league tape, come on, people don't think that okay, you could beat him one on one. Hey, I was 90 years old back then, but I bet you they didn't show me the highlights of me running over them little kids. Wait, wait, wait. I thought you weren't at 90 yet. I thought you weren't at that age of hooting and hollering yet at Man, 90 years old. I was so dang old on that thing. And, hey, but they didn't have the highlights when I was just running them over. <laughs> yeah, boy, they was looking like little chicken wings out there. N- n- no one... and, they, and they didn't see me in my heyday. Like I said, my heyday. That was, man, I was 320 pounds right there. But you averaged 2.2 points per game in college. How, how good were okay, you? Okay, but... Uh, they, but how long did I only play a, a minute or two? I only played a minute because I was defiant because I was shooting too fast. Why do you think I left? Now that you was s- the worst coach I ever had. That's why it was the only time I transferred playing for that coach. They played too slow. 
I was defiant on the fact that as soon as I got the ball, I was going to dunk and shoot. Now, you say you could beat anyone one-on-one. -on -one. Let's say Anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Hold on, hold on. Let's say you're prime versus LeBron James's prime. There's no way you beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Why not? Do you see LeBron James play? Have you seen me play? <laughs> yeah, I've seen you play on okay, your tape. you saw LeBron James play when he was young. You didn't see me play. I was 270, <laughs> bitching 500 pounds. How There's about no way LeBron would have beat me. How about Shaq? Would you kick Shaq's ass too? Too fast for Shaq. <laughs> All right. Too fast. One last thing before we let LeVar Ball run. I do appreciate you coming on today. Ain't no problem. Y your three sons, if you had to rank them in terms of basketball ability, how do you rank them? One. No, come on. If you come on, there's one's got to be better than the other. How, how do you rank them? They all number one. They all play differently. Lonzo's the playmaker, number one. Jello's the pure scorer, and Melo is the hybrid. He can do either one. So they're number ones, and I look at all of them as number ones on what they do. Hey, I got one more thing for you that just popped in my head. If you had to tell me one thing about each of your sons that most people don't know. What would you tell me? You wouldn't know that they're as funny as they are and outgoing. Okay. Because you guys catch them on, when they're on a serious note, which is on and off that court. But when they lose, man, y'all think they was the next comedians coming up. <laughs> so they take after their dad in that aspect, right? Oh, man. That aspect. <laughs> and catch them playing PlayStation here. You'd be like, man, LeVar, you got to be quiet because they be talking crazy. Hey, hey, since we started this conversation with food, let's end it with food. I hear you have a donut shop next to you that you love to go to. Tell me about these donuts. Oh, man, it's called a donut club, <laughs> and I'm a triple platinum member. <laughs> yes. How does one become a triple platinum make, member? It's a square donut with chocolate chips and cinnamon hmm. glazed chocolate donut square. H how does one become a triple club member? <laughs> you got to buy over 3,000 donuts for the year. <laughs> Your sons eat them? Yes. Wow. Okay. Sometimes we go to the donut shop when nobody has nothing to do late at night, like <laughs> 1 o'clock, and just give them $20 and tell them keep giving us donuts till we run out of money. Hey, LeVar, you're the best. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you guys kindly, man. Y'all have a good one. You too. Love to see your son in Philly. Okay. You got it. There's LeVar Ball joining us on the Zach Gelb Show. Fox Sports 920, the jersey. Man, he's tough to interview because he'll start talking and he'll take a long, dramatic pause, and you think, okay, let me interject here, and the next thing you know, he starts rambling for a few more seconds. But hey, that's what you got. He's entertaining. We had to get our piece of the pie today, and he's someone that you know he thinks the world of his kid and all of his kids, and he should because he's their father. Now, in terms of when it comes to toning it down, Eventually, his act's going to get old, and it's entertaining now, it's current now, but eventually people are just going to say, enough of this guy already. But man, he, he was fun to talk to, and that would be something if you could get Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Lonzo Ball. I would love to see Lonzo, because I believe Lonzo's going to be a real-time big player watching him play at UCLA this year, but the guy I really want the Sixers to get, the guy that I'm hopeful that the Sixers are going to get is Malik Monk. Because if you get Ben Simmons facilitating the basketball, assuming Embiid could stay healthy, to Embiid, and then also you have Monk on the perimeter just knocking down threes, whoo, that would definitely be fun to watch. But LeVar Ball just joining us on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the jersey. You see a theme? He likes to blame the coach when things doesn't go right. You see, he's blaming the high school coach. He blames his college coach, the worst coach he's ever played for. And I know he says that, hey, he'll let him be his own man in the pros and he's not going to interfere and do all that stuff. Well, it's hard to believe. And here's why it's hard to believe. Because you see the history. Do you see the background in this? It's, oh, it's the coach's fault. It's the coach's fault. Well, when you get to the pros, no one's going to care what dad has to say. Yeah, he'll get a big shoe deal. He won't get a billion dollars. He will maybe get an analyst job or something like that. And who knows? Maybe he doesn't have the time. They're already doing the reality show with his, uh, his son Lonzo leading up to the draft, and maybe he's trying to be the next Kardashian. <laughs> maybe he is. But he's entertaining, and at first I didn't like him. At first I said, oh, he's obnoxious, just shut up, please. And then I started to realize he knows what he's saying with everything, and he doesn't believe some of this stuff. Uh, down deep, he could say, oh, yeah, he could beat Michael Jordan. No way. He can't beat LeBron James. No chance. 
if he could have, he would have averaged a whole lot better than 2.2 points per game in college. But very interesting stuff and a fun conversation with LeVar Ball. All right, we got to take a break here on the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, the Jersey. We'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere, folks. 